Father, I will come out of this because I am the blessed one of God. I am so excited. Ladies, put your names in the chat. Let me see who's here and where are you coming in from? And what has it been like for you since morning? I mean, we had Rumpi there shaking us left, right, and center, you know, shaking the fear out of us. Hansi, what do you fear? So what if they, we don't know who they are, so what if they say what they say? So what if you fail? So what if you fall? You just get up and you keep going. And then we had the amazing Tendai full of fire for your money, for your finances, for your wealth, for your legacy, for the inheritance of your children. Come on, we are a generational people. We are a people that are here to be set free, to be unlocked, to be released so that we can be more and be the more that God created us. Because whatever your idea of more is, times a billion over that, that's what God thinks about you. So I'm so excited, ladies, to see you all here. Thank you so much for logging in. Thank you so much for coming in and just, um taking that time. Um, like Tendai said earlier, my name is Bonai and I am uh, coming in live from a town called Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire and I'm just so excited to see you here. So now we are more, ladies, I'm here to talk and say there is greatness in you. You are more than what you think. You are more than what you see. You are more than what the world thinks because you are what God thinks, not even thinks, you are what he has already done and finished and completed in him who is greater than anything and whatsoever anybody can say. That is what we are about. That's what I want to take you on a journey. And at the end, you will know you better than anybody else around you. You will know who you are and what you are about and what you are about to go and do for God for such a time as this. You are blessed daughters of the, of, of the of, of daughters of God. So um, I'm not the best person with technology, so I'm gonna try and share my screen. If not, you will just have to do with my face um, and, and I'm sure God will be so, um, so gracious to me. God bless you for your patience. I will try and share and see what happens. Share. Wonderful. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. So ladies, you are created for greatness. And I'm here to say you are more. And I want to take us to, to a scripture that I love, a scripture that talks about, um, it, it, it sort of encapsulates what we have been about since morning, what Rumbi has been talking about. Because there are so many things in our lives that draw us back, that weigh us down. And it is because we live in a world that has got so many things going on that at the end of it all, we feel so weighed down. There's so much going on. We fear that, we are sick from that, we have been hurt. So much has happened in your life. But you know what, I go to Hebrews, 12 verse 1 that says therefore we also since are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses there have been those that have gone before us and that have conquered we are surrounded by them and they are there to encourage us so they are saying Paul is saying let us uh, let us lay aside every weight and every sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance, the race that is set before us. There is the race, ladies, that we have to run. And if we are to run that race, oh my goodness, we have to forget about so-and-so said this about me. We have to forget about that husband that did this to me. We have to forget about that abuser. We have to forget about that thief. We have to forget about that betrayal. Because if we allow those things to come, if we put them on, they are so heavy to carry. You will not run the race that God set 
before you at the beginning of time. And those things, they make you not see yourself clearly for who you are, because you were created for greatness. You were created for more. You are more than that job that you are at from eight till five, you are more than that shift that you go to, that long day that you go to. You are more than being called a missus or a mister, or you are a miss, or you are a miss. You are more than that. You are more than what your brain tells you, your mind tells you you are. There is greatness that is inside, for me, inside of you. You are more because God created you with intention he was intentional when he put you together this is the time for us ladies to rise up and to start to walk into the more that is our inheritance and i want you today when you live here to believe it i am more please write in the chat i am more i was born to win i am created for greatness. Now, when we look at uh, uh, um, David, King David, nobody ever suspected that little guy was anything other than a shepherd boy. They just thought, David, go to the fields, take the sheep, take the, if it was in Zimbabwe, take the cows, take the goats, you know, and there were no foods. Uh, that was what they saw in him, just a shepherd boy. His father did not see the king in David. His brothers did not see the king in David. King Saul did not see the king in David. But God knew what was in David. The world may not see what is inside of you. The world may not see you coming. But God knew that such a time would come. And the world will see you when you rise up and you take your, and you take your place. David was more. He was more. And you know what? Even Goliath. Goliath did not see David. Goliath did not see the more that was in David. He never expected that this little guy was coming with something that was mightier, something that was more deadly than what Goliath had. So ladies, even you, you are more. You are more than what the world tells you. Your, your, your parents said, ah, these are our wishes for you. Tendai, we want you to be a lawyer. Rumbi, we want you to be, we want you to be a financier. So and so, we want you to be this. Somebody else told you you are not good for anything. Even your own mind, it tells you that you are not good enough. You can't do that. Do you think you can speak like that? Look at so-and-so who does this. Do you think your own mind can lie to you? Your own husband can lie to you. Your own children can lie to you. Your boss will tell you you are good enough for sitting behind that desk and that you are nothing else. But God, at the beginning of time, but God, please write, but God in those chats, God knew. And today, it is the day that you are going to know who you are. Ladies and gentlemen, what is your DNA? What is in your DNA? Who are you? What is in your DNA? Who made you? Who created you? And until you know that, you will know who you are and whose you are. DNA, what is inside of you? That is what you become. That is the fruit that you will become. But we have to lay aside every weight, every sin which so easily ensnares us. And we have to run the race with endurance. No more delays. No more procrastination. No more fear. No more. Not after today. We have to be set free so that we can run. We are more. Understanding comes with knowing what is inside of you. Listen, you and I, we carry the DNA of God. You know what? At the beginning of time, Mwari, God, he sat down and he had a dare, a council, a meeting with himself, with the Godhead. He said, come, Holy Spirit, come, Son, come, the Father. And they sat down and they decided to make Wonai. They decided to make mercy. They decided to make Yemurai. They decided to make 
precious. They decided to make Jane. They decided to make patience. Can you imagine a meeting higher than the Godhead coming together to create you? He and what they came to at the end when they had written their minutes that we are going to make this person in our own image. We are going to to make them do what we can do, think in the way we can do, talk in the way that we can understand and fellowship together. I do not want to 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 talk to a dog. I do not want to talk to a cat. I do not want to talk to an elephant. I want something that is similar to me and you know what god poured himself into you created you he breathed his own breath into you so that adam then came to life because the breath of god was in him so that is who you are if you can understand that you will know who you are if you listen to what people tell you, you will never amount to anything. You have to tell yourself who you are. God says you are not ordinary. You are not average. You are not nothing. You are valuable. You carry his spirit within you. You carry purpose because he put his purpose inside of you. He says you are the light and you are the salt of the earth. You have potential. You are sitting on gold. That gold is potential. That potential is what says you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you. That potential says I am not afraid. I do do not have a mind that is fearful, but I have one that has power and power, power and love. And it is sound. Nothing wrong with it. It is sound. That's what God says. So when you dip into that potential, all those things come alive inside of you. You can do anything. You have the ability to talk, to think, to dream. You have all that. This, this is, can you imagine anything? higher than that in all the earth god put us above all of that the cat will not talk try and talk to a cat and get a meow the elephant will not talk but you can you can converse with god that is who you are that's his dna that is inside of you let us go further and see what he says hallelujah i love this god because then he takes me um to his word and he tells me that I am his masterpiece, a masterpiece. That's what he tells me. He says, I'm a masterpiece. And he created me and you in Christ Jesus so I can do great things, good things that he planned for me long ago. Again, I come back and I say, we are sitting ducks. We are just sitting there. And yet there are things that we were created to do. You are created, made everything within you to do great and mighty things with God for God. And he has given you everything that you need to, to, to do that work. Hallelujah. And my question to you, I just want to challenge you today. I'm going to keep challenging you today and ask you, are you walking like a masterpiece? Before we get there, maybe understand what a masterpiece is. This is the most outstanding piece of work of a creative artist. Hmm. Yeah, the most creative, outstanding work of an artist. And we are talking about no ordinary art artist. We are talking about the greatest creator, the greatest artist, the greatest painter. God himself created us. We are his best. You are his best. Think about it and blow your mind thinking about it. So our duty now is to live a life that resembles a masterpiece. We may never get there because we are a work in progress, but day by day, let us do it through what we think. What thoughts are you thinking? What decisions are you making every single day? What attitudes do you portray to people, to the people around you? What actions do you take? What's your talk like? 
does it resemble a masterpiece? And it takes looking unto God when you look to him, when you stay in him, rooted and anchored in him, he will release the masterpiece potential, the masterpiece anointing so that you can sit in it. He already put it in there, but the more you look to him, the more it manifests in you, the more you become, the more that you are supposed to be. Because even if you do it every day, you would never ever outthink him. You would never outwish his wishes for you. You would never out desire what his best desires are for you. There is with God, there is always, always more. There is always more. We are his, we are, we are just what we are. We are special. Listen, we are what we are. We are a, a, a royal priesthood. We are a people of power. We are not mediocre. We are not average. The, the God that we pray to, the Bible that we read, it does not show us a God who is unable, who sometimes has to go and, 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 and take a, a nap to think about the issues that you are facing. The God that we know uh, uh, he, he, he is not bothered to create anything that does not matter. Every single one of what he has created, it matters. He, he is not aimless. His, his mind does not wander about thinking, oh my goodness, nothing don't be me never know how. No, God put in more care more attention, more detail, more effort into creating you, his masterpiece. Because <laughs> from the beginning of time, he had greatness for you. So we do him a disfavor when we don't walk even a tenth, a one hundredth of the greatness that he is for us. We do ourselves a disservice. We do our children and their children's children, our great, great, great children. We do them a disfavor when we don't leave them the right uh, 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 legacy that will teach them so that they know what it is to be great, to be more. So I want you to think, when you look at yourself, are you walking like a masterpiece? Are you thinking like a masterpiece? Do you talk like one? Do you look like one? And until you start walking like a masterpiece, thinking, talking, and mirroring one, you have to keep reaching out for more because you haven't, you haven't started it all. There is much work to be done. The word also says, this is what God says. One, he says, you are a masterpiece. You are not ordinary. You are not mediocre. You are a work of art. And then secondly, he says, you are the light and the salt. If you go to Matthew 5, 13, we all know that, that, that scripture, you are the light and you are the salt. And God says, people have to see me through you. They must see my light through you. The work that I do must be seen through you. God is not going to come down and feed the hungry. God is not going to come down and give your neighbor a, 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 a bowl of soup, you know, or, or, or stew and rice because they, 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 they've been affected by COVID. God is waiting on you and me to do that work. God is waiting on you and me to, to, to resemble his heart and showcase his heart and his compassion on this world. That, that's the light that he talks about. That is the salt that he's talking about. You and I, we bring the light, we bring the solutions that are needed right now in this very season. Listen, if not you and me, then who? We are the believers. We are the daughters of God. We are the ones that, that say, oh, we follow Christ Jesus, who was all about love. Where is your love? If you and I are not doing it, who will extend God's purposes on the earth? Who will reveal his heart and his mercies and compassion? You and I, we have work to do, my dear. And this is the day and this is the time. Heaven is not locked down. Therefore, you and I are not locked down because we belong to that kingdom that is higher and that is above. 
you and I must carry our saltness. We must carry that light that is needed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can someone just write down them what it is that they are doing right now in this season to be the salt and to be the light? Can someone just write down there to say, I'm going to change. I'm going to start showing the heart of God. I'm going to start to show the message of God with whatever I have, wherever I am, I am going to start to show the greatness that is inside of me. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, God, when he created all things, he didn't create anything without purpose, without reason. Everything that he has created, there is a purpose for it. The, the plants that are out there, we use them for herbs. We use them for, for medicine. The bees that fly and are busy all the time, they have a job of pollination. The sun that is out there, it provides sun and it provides heat. You know, the stars, everything God created, it had a reason. And so then if God can give everything else under the sun a purpose and a reason for being, would he not do even higher for you and I? Would he not have a higher purpose, a higher reason for you and for me to be alive at such a time as this? Do you never ask yourself the why questions? Why am I here? Why am I black? Why do I come from Bulawayo, Zimbabwe? Why do I come from Malawi or Zambia? Why am I slim, fat, short? Why am I good at talking? Do you never ask yourself those questions? It is where it is in asking those questions that you will get to the answers that you really do need to know. God himself, he took Adam at the beginning of time. When he put Adam down on earth, he gave Adam a purpose for being down there in the Garden of Eden. He did not just put him there and leave him there. He said to him uh, in Genesis 2.15, the Lord God took man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Adam was to be the caretaker and to manage all of God's resources. And that mandate continues today for you and for me. Each one of us, we have something. And it is the influence of the Holy Spirit in the lives of believers that will give us the insights that we need to understand why we are here so we can step into doing what it is that God has called us to do. And we have to remember again, listen, we have allowed the world, the secular world, to um, dictate the pace of things. We have allowed them to show how to get to show us how to get wealth. We have allowed them to lead, and yet we are the ones that should be leading. Because even at the beginning of time, when God created this the, 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 the Eden and put Adam and Eve there, He said to them. After blessing them, he said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion. You and me, we are to have dominion. You and me should be receiving the downloads from heaven about what to do about coronavirus. We should be knowing how to getting the solutions to help those that are fearful, to help those that have found themselves with no jobs anymore. The recession, they are saying the recession has come. Where are the Christians? Where are we, my sisters, my brothers? Where are we right now with bringing in solutions to make this place a better place as we look to God. Where are we with being fruitful? Are we multiplying the things that God is giving us? Or are we sitting and waiting and going to bed with fear and going to bed with the enemy and being fearful to go forth and say, this is what I can do at such a time. Do you not wish to be like Esther at the time where she found herself and she said, if I perish, I will perish, but I will do this one thing, you know, that, 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 that her people might be saved. 
What about you and God's people? What is it that you are doing in your small way? In your small way, where you are with what you have, are you being fruitful at all? Are you being fruitful? Are you multiplying what God has given you? Now, one of the things that I'm so passionate about and I talk about a lot is about having a dream for your life. Now, this goes in hand in hand with having a purpose. Now, we have to understand that the ability to dream comes from God. Now, I might be interchangeable here when I talk about the dreams, because there are those dreams that you have in the night. Some of them are prophetic, where God will be directing you and showing you what is to happen in your life. And in this, we look at people like uh, uh, Joseph. But I want to talk more about the dreams that we call dreams, but these are desires. These are wishes that we have. These are aspirations that we have. Now, everything that you are is from God. Every gift, every good gift, we know it comes from God. So even the ability, the desires of our hearts, God knows them. Because at the very beginning of time when he created you, he put those desires inside of you. He put the aspirations inside of you. And he gifted you with so many other things that you do naturally. You don't think about them. You just do. You know, some people just were born singing. You know, they just sing. The rest of us, we have to struggle to keep in tune with, with, with the praise and worship team when they are up there. Some people just are born artists they can draw they can write some you know gifts that you didn't have to ask anyone they are gifts and you have talents why do you think you have those things they are the 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 clues that lead you to the purposes that god has for you now i want to encourage you that you know, unless you have a dream for your life, a dream is a vision, a dream is a picture that you have of your life, of the future that is to come, of the things you wish to see happening in your life. You have to have that because it directs you. It gives you a light. It shows you where to go because then whatsoever you are doing in your life, you keep going back. Does it align with the dream? that I had. Have a dream for your life. Have a dream for your marriage. Have a dream for your children. Have your dream for your career. Have a dream. You know, when you have something, think, what, what, what would I like to see happening here? And you go to God and you pray, can I do this? Is, does this align with everything? about who I am, about who God says I am. And, and dreaming, you know, it's not for the average. It's for us, the royal priesthood. It's for us who are above average. It's for us who are not afraid to see a dream and say, I will go for it. Because it is pointless for you to lie all day dreaming about this exciting thing that you are going to do. And every day you are dreaming about it and you never get up to do the work that is required. A dream comes with a lot of work, a lot of effort. So you will need that boldness that has been talked about all morning. You will need the boldness. You will need the courage to keep going. You will need to know when to stop the dreaming and start the working. So the dreaming is just part and parcel what you have, you have to do. And, and God uses these, these visions, dreams, visions when you dream you see pictures in your head god gave us the ability to, to to create those visions in our head right now if i say um coca-cola straight away in your head you will see a bottle of coca-cola that is a that is something that god has put in us we are able to 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 visualize he communicates with us in that way, because he knows we understand things better when they are in a vision form. That's why even Christ Jesus, when he was here teaching, he would always use parables so that people could see. That's why when God, went, when he went to visit Abraham, he took him outside and he said, I want you to look up Abraham. What do you see? 
And Abraham could say, I see the stars. Can you count them? He could not. And God says, that's how many children I'm going to give you. You are going to be a father of nations. And that was the aha moment for Abraham because he could see. Because when someone says, I'll give you many oranges, you don't know what that looks like unless I bring a bag full or a truck full that then makes sense to you. So God knows we understand that. That's why he gives us those things to see in our minds so that we get a better understanding so that we can then follow those dreams and start to have them manifest and start to desire them even more and start to chase them even more. I mean, if you look at the life of Joseph, after he had the dream, he chased the dream. He knew whatsoever else comes my way. I will not stop until I get to what I saw in that dream. I will not allow Potiphar's wife, Pot Potiphar's wife to entangle me in a scandal. I will not die in this pit where I have been thrown. I will not die in this prison where I've been thrown. There is a higher calling that awaits me and I'm going to keep my faith. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to run with endurance the race that has been set before me. So even for yourself, you yourself, you know what God has been calling you. You yourself, you know the dreams that are there within you or the ones that you dreamt years and years ago. Some of them, they have died. Some of them, they have been forgotten. But but you know what today let them be resurrected in the mighty name of Jesus today we want to call them forth every dream must come forth every desire that you've wanted to see in your life whether it is for your health for your children for your career for your ministry whatever it is today we want to call it forth because there is a God in heaven who is just waiting to give you more than you ever thought than you could ever ask than you could ever imagine that is the God I'm talking about. So whatever it is, let us go back into the archives. Let us dig those forgotten wells and start to get the springs and the streams coming up so that those dreams can start to manifest now. This is the time, ladies. We are not giving up. No more delays. No more procrastination. Rumbi has already spoken about fear. So what? Face the fear. Do it with fear. Just go forth and do it. God is enough. That, that's whose witness you need. You and God as a team, you are unbeatable. You don't need me to agree with you to say, go ahead. And you don't need anyone's permission to dream. You only need God. We only need to partner with God. Listen. I've gone, I've gone ahead of my, uh, I, I do forget, I, I, I go ahead of my, of my PowerPoint, but never mind. Um, yeah, yes, the dream will shape you. It is the reason that you live. It is a seed that is planted in you by God. It is the blueprint of your purpose and it energizes you. Every time you have an idea, do you not get excited and you just think about it and you want to talk to everybody about it? That is the power of a dream. The dream distinguishes you. You stand out. A person with a dream, so confident, man, their attitude, it distinguishes. They, they, they sit up, you know, they speak with confidence. They have a dream. They have a dream. You know, a dream will release your potential and it will encourage you in the things that you need to do. And it will motivate you. It is crazy not to dream. You just have to dream. And you have to partner with God. Dream with God because he is the giver of dreams. He knows where you need uh, um, he, he gives, he's got the strategies. He's got the solutions. He will direct you. We have to dream with God. And you know, when God wants to work in our lives, he does this. He'll give you a dream about yourself, about what he wants you to do, about how he's going to use you mightily. And then you, you, you have that dream, you know, and it gets at the back of your mind, you even know what it means. But because you just have to share it, you are going to call one eye and say, 
mm, woman of God, I had this dream. Oh, he did this. And then there was this. And they were bowing down to me. Woman of God, what do you think it means? You know, you know what it means. You're just looking for a witness. God will do that to raise your expectations, to raise your excitement. That's what God does. We need to dream with God. We cannot do it without God. Partner with him. He has the strategy for each one of your dreams. Sorry. Yeah. Above all, seek to dream with God. God-sized dreams give glory to him. Not you. Not me. Our dreams, the ones we dream ourselves, they're small. They're tiny. I can dream that I want to open a school in Zimbabwe. Listen, that's not a good dream. That's not a kind of dream because you can open a school. Oh, I want to, 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 to buy 10 computers. And you go to God and to bother him. When someone, someone in Zimbabwe can even give you the 10 co a, a computers, there are dreams that we shouldn't bother God with. Let's bother dreams. Let's bother, bother God with God sized dreams, the ones that blow your mind, the one that you think, ah, I can't make sense of it. And for sure you can't, because it is only through God that some dreams can be established. Let us be kingdom people. Let us be kingdom minded, kingdom focused. Let us think way, way ahead, because we are not seated here, ladies. We are seated up there in heavenly places. So when we think, let us think from up there. When we are declaring, let us declare from up there. When we fight, let us fight from up there. When we dream, let us dream from the throne room of God. Let's not dream from your beautiful double king size, king, queen size bed and dream little, little dreams of going on holiday to Hawaii, you know, to Thailand, to Dubai. No. Let us dream kingdom dreams, purpose-filled dreams, dreams that take forward the purposes of God, not just for your lives, but for the lives of those around you. Dreams that will impact those around you. Dreams that will change the trajectory of things. Things, dreams that will write a new story to COVID. Come on, we are a kingdom people. We are an extraordinary generation. I do not care how old you are. I'm 50 plus, but you know what? I will never stop dreaming and I will never stop going to God and I will never stop asking him for the more. I will keep going back and say, God, this is what I thought, but I want to think more. I want to think your thoughts. God, this is what I'm thinking. Is this the more that there is to this issue? God, I want, come on. It's limitless what God can do. Creator, heaven and earth, and even under the earth, is there. Even in hell, God is there. He can blow hell up right now if you wish to, because he is God. What about you and your dreams? What about you who love him? Will he not do anything for you for this season? He is always up to something big. With him, we can dream the impossible because all things are possible with God. God does not, it's not a secret what your purpose is. Some people always say, oh, I don't know what my purpose is. Oh, what am I supposed It's not a secret. God does not want to hide anything from you. But because of those things that Rumbi spoke about earlier, we find ourselves being encumbered and snared by sin. Sin and, and the weight of this world that we, 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 we can't get up to see what is right under our nose. Do you not ever ask yourself why I'm the way that I am? Why, why, why do I care about uh, orphans? Do you not ever wonder why you are not a cat? Will a cat speak for, for God? God wants your voice. Will a dog write a book to encourage others? God wants the gift he has given you. Will a cow sing and worship God? Why can you not see what is right before your nose and step into everything that you are? The dreams that I'm talking about, they will require you to sacrifice. 
And you have to be able to say, if I die, I die, just like Esther did. So you've got gifts, do you not? You've got things that are burdening you. What burdens has God placed on you? And what have you done about it? What wishes and de desires do you carry in your heart? Secretly. The time for secret is over, guys. God does not hide. The time for secret, you are hiding your secret. You are hiding your wishes. Why? How can we help you if we don't know what it is that you carry? How can, the, how can the, the, the helpers come? The connectors, how can they come when they have no idea what you are about? Mm. We are not here just to exist. We are here to live a life that is full of God, that is full of miracles, that is full of great exploits. You are not here just to sit back and do nothing with the life that God gave you. You are not here to make a mockery of the fact that Christ Jesus was sacrificed for you and for me. He died that you and I may be set free and may live a life of abundance. Are we going to let that just slide by? Like, ah, okay, when it's Easter time, we deal with that and then we move on. He died, guys. He died for you and me to be set free. And Rumbi said this morning, he who the son has set free, he has been set free indeed. You and I, we are set free. We have been, whatever has been uh, imprisoning us, we have to let it go. Don't keep going to look for that wound. It's painful, leave it in the past and move on. You are a masterpiece, you are light, you are sold, you are here for a reason, you are equipped, you are fully equipped for what God has for you. God did not just plant you a mushroom in the, in the bush and say grow. No, God gave you the gifts, he gave you the talent, he gave you the Lord Jesus Christ. He was even sacrificed for you. He has given you the Holy Spirit. You have given, been given the blood of Jesus and his word full of promises of what you and I can do. Is it wealth that you need? He says, I have given you the ability to create that wealth. You have everything, woman of God. You have everything to keep going. Therefore, now what you need to do is to position yourself. Take your rightful stance, take your rightful position as a son and a daughter of God. Go to God and repent for the stuff that you haven't done for him, knowing that he's fully equipped you, knowing that he has spoken to you, knowing that he has a purpose for you. Come on now, we can do better than that. Position yourself now for the greatness that you know is inside of you. Position yourself by having the right mind, the, the right thoughts, by having the right attitude. Position yourself with how you, you look. Be a masterpiece, everything about you. Position yourself with what you do, with what you speak, what you focus on, how you spend your time, who you spend your time with. Position yourself for greatness because you were not created as a nothing. You were created for more. You were born to win, created for greatness. You were designed to succeed. You are destined to win and you should not settle, settle for less than God's best for you. And God's best is that you are a masterpiece. Why are you settling for less? On your place in the world, Take your place in the world and say, I have arrived. You had thought that I was down, but I'm not down and out, I'm here. You had thought that I was locked down, but I am unlocked and I'm released. I'm, I'm coming now, I'm taking my place in the world. On your place now, what you do today, ladies, it matters and it counts. What position are you going to take in the world? What are you doing to remain inspired? It's okay to read the Bible. It's okay to pray in your closet. But when you leave the closet and you close the Bible, what are you doing? What are you doing to remain motivated? What are you doing to stay ahead of your game? What are you intentional about? 2021, January the 16th, let's change things. Let's take 
possession of our possessions. This is the time. We are not settling for less. So what you do every single day, it counts. What you think counts. What you say counts. Who you spend time with counts. What you do with your life and the legacy that you will live is determined by the sum total of the things that you do. We have two important days in life. The day we are born, the day we die. What happens in between, it is up to you. Those are the choices you make. Make the right choices. Because you know what, one day, and that one day is going to come for you and me. That one day is the most certain day in everybody's life when we are going to stand before God. And he's going to say, Cynthia, Mina, Powell, Tracy, Evelyn, Fiso. He's going to say, I gave you a life. I gave you 85 years on earth. I gave you 90 years. I gave you 70 years. What did you do with the time that I gave you? What did you do with the people that I gave you? What did you do with the opportunities I gave you? What did you do with the gifts and the talents that I gave you? That time is coming. And he will say, now this is now I'm asking you this. God has given us all 24 hours, right? What do you do all day? That's the question. What are you doing every single day for the 24 hours? Can you account for your 24 hours? What are you doing? Are you on Netflix? Are you on Showmax? Are you on WhatsApp? Are you on Facebook? I mean, how many, how, how many hours is that? Are you sleeping? Are you working for someone? Are you shifting? What are you doing with your 24 hours? What do you do all day? What am I doing with what I have? How do I fulfill God's mandate, his creation mandate? What am I doing? How am I fulfilling it today? How can God's kingdom be made manifest in your sphere of, of, of influence in this season of your life? Let's not talk about last year. Let's talk about now, 2021. We've got 11 months to go. Today, let's purpose to study, to pursue, to think and pray for wisdom from God that he may direct us, that he may show us because that time is going to come. And today, what I want you to do is to refuse to settle, refuse to settle for less than what God says, refuse to be average, refuse to stay in your duvet in the comfort zone, refuse to compromise, pursue your very best love with life with a passion and a zeal. Be like the Apostle Paul and just keep running your, keep running your race, keep going. Keep going. It's not over until it's over. When you are now standing before God and he says, well done. Well done, my good and faithful servant daughter. I love you so much. Everything I gave you, you poured out. Paul said, I have run my race. I have I fought the, 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 the faith and I've been poured out like a drink offering. Poured out everything. Iwewe, can you say you have been poured out and how? Be hungry, be like Jabez and cry out for more. God heard him. Challenge everything, challenge your spiritual life. Is it enough? Is it more? Is it the more, the best you can get? Your spiritual life, challenge it. Challenge your mental life, challenge your thoughts for more. There's always more. Challenge your financial life. Tendai was teaching us about finances. Challenge what you know. Challenge where you are. Challenge your fears. Face them and do it anyway. Challenge your physical life. Is your health at optimum level? Some of us, we have high blood pressure. I challenge it every day. I say, God, I'm still taking those tablets. I want the more. I want the best for my health. I want the best for my finances where I'm not waiting every month for months and to come because gone salary. Stretch yourself because you can never outstretch what God gave you. Believe God for more because the more is there. I want you to believe him for the ridiculous, for the impossible. The other day we were talking with Tendai and Rumbi and we were saying we are believing for, for ridiculous mir miracles or 
ridiculous, miraculous, something like that. Be like Abraham and believe. We are 100 years old. Your sperm will be alive. You know, be like Noah. He had never seen rain, but he was told to build an ark. He built it. Enlarge your faith capacity. I go now as I finish to Philippians 3.13. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining forward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Forget what is behind. We have to live behind our past mistakes because if we don't, we will keep defining ourselves by those mistakes. And that will make us timid. It will make us fearful. It will make us ineffective as the soldiers who are fighting for the kingdom. It will make us fearful to take risks, healthy risks. The Lord says, go ye and occupy. Which places are you occupying? Where are you going leading? Where? In your closet? No. What are you occupying? Where? How? Which mountain have you, of influence have you taken territory? Which place in the world have you owned for you, for God? Remember, we are not doing this for ourselves. God has given you everything you need in Christ in order to excel and to succeed at life for all eternity. So do what you must do. Run your race. Keep your eye on the goal and make sure that you are completely poured out when your time comes. The thing is, you are still here, aren't you? God is not through with you yet. And ladies, may this not be your portion. There will be no more delays in your life, no more wasting time, no more procrastination, no more overthinking, no more pain, no more fear. We are more than that. We are conquerors. We are victorious. We are people waiting. We are not people who keep waiting and saying tomorrow, because tomorrow may never come. And tomorrow never comes, because when tomorrow comes, you say tomorrow. So you will not die like that skeleton there, waiting for something. God is waiting on you. There are people waiting on you to do something that will unshackle them. People waiting to read your book. People waiting to hear your song. People waiting to hear the teaching and the revelation that God has put inside of you. People waiting for the food that you are going to cook for those that cannot. People waiting for your prayers that you must pray, not just for you in the closet and your family, but for others. People waiting for that phone call for you to ask, are you well enough? People are waiting. The world needs you. You are needed. That is my message for you, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. And I want to leave you with this. Why do you get up in the morning? Do you have a dream? And with that, can I just invite you that we pray? Just um, let's just close our eyes and just pray um, and just agree together as we pray. And if you want to unmute and pray in the spirit, that is fine. Let's just go before God. If we need to repent for, for, for the dreams that we have allowed to go, for not listening when he sent us and not going, there is much work for you and me to do. Let us just go before him now and pray. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We Amen. say you are holy, you are king, you are Lord, oh Father. Yes, oh, we Lord. just acknowledge you, Father, this afternoon. King of kings Amen. and Lord, yes. Abba, Father, creator of all the heavens and the earth. We honor you, oh God. You have told us, Lord, that way there is no vision, your people perish. Knowing that, Father, we now ask for that particular dream, that particular vision, that dream of the Father, I it is you that I need, O God, it is your desire, I'm not going to be able to do anything. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just have a message from God and I just want to read it all out to you. Rhonda Masiana, I apologize I've had to not mute you all. Um, God says, rely on me alone. I am your only hope. Pursue righteousness and love and you will most certainly find life, prosperity and honor. I will grant your requests because you are honorable in my sight. I will enlarge your territory and my hand will be upon you. I have plans to prosper you, plans to give you a future filled with hope. For you fear me, you shall not want. For you seek me, you shall not lack any good thing. I make the dreams of the poor come true. I will set you on high places. I promise you wealth, honor, and life. I will give you the strength to produce wealth to, conf to confirm my covenant. Don't give up because in due time you will reap the rewards. I will freely give you all good things. I am for you. No one can stop you. You will be blessed when you put your hope in me. I shall supply all your needs and more according to my glorious riches. I will give you the desires of your heart and make all of your plans succeed. That is what the Lord says. And so before I release you, I'm just going to make a declaration over, over your lives that you are born to win. Father, they are born to win. They are your daughters. May they live up to their highest calling. They are more than conquerors. May they have an unshakable faith in you. They are champions. They were born to win. They have greatness within them. They have the more that you have for them in you. In Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I pray and I hope that you have been blessed. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Moni. That was powerful. That was packed, packed, packed. Thank you so much. May God refresh you as you have refreshed us, as you have empowered us. Let's unmute and just give her a clap offering. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, our midwife. Our midwife. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And the midwife. Thank you. Uh, somebody's asking you if you could please uh, if you could po post the word you just declared for its confirmation the word of what God gave me in 2021 
that's from Pastor T. She says, I'm crying right now and in awe of God. Please share well, Amazing. this woman of God is not very good uh, at technology. It's on my iPad and I'm on my laptop. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I will send it to Rumbi. Email it. Or you can send it to me and then I can. Send it. I will send it to Rumbi. Yeah. And if anybody else wants it, you will have to get hold of me and I can just forward to you. Amen. Amen. Oh, 